Hey guys, it is NCS fan 001 here for the road to my 750th Platinum Trophy. To this day, this is one of my absolute proudest accomplishments in all of gaming, in all of my gaming history, and one of the most challenging Platinums I have ever obtained. Platinum Trophy number 750 is none other than Call of Duty Classic. So, fun story, this was one of the very first games I ever obtained trophies in, all the way back in 2011, back when we got this game for free with that... Does anyone remember the old uh, PSN network outage that went on for like three weeks back then? No one could get online or anything for about three weeks, and then they gave us... I think it was two free games from a list, and this was one of the choices, so of course I picked this because I was a big Call of Duty person at the time. Uh, yeah, so that's how I got this game back in the day, and it is an absolutely brutal Platinum Trophy. Now, the interesting thing about this game, though, is that in reality, most of the trophies in this game are really easy and can be obtained in a day with no issues, because most of the trophies are simply tied to completing each of the missions of the campaign, and I want to say there are maybe 27 campaign missions? It's something like that. It's around 27 missions. So, if you beat the campaign on regular your first time through, you're guaranteed to get something like 30 of the trophies just by beating the game. And then, you have a few miscellaneous trophies, like 5 miscellaneous trophies that are all, like, actually really easy to get. And shouldn't give you any real problems. You'll... You probably won't get some of them naturally, you might have to go back and do some of them on the Greenhorn, which is recruit difficulty for this game. So you may have to go back and do a couple on that difficulty, but otherwise you're not going to have any real problems with it. It's mostly just the fact that you have to beat this game on Veteran. Now, Hardened is definitely harder than a lot of Call of Duty games. Yeah, I would definitely say that Hardened is up there, honestly, with some of the easier Veteran difficulties in Call of Duty games. So... It's not really anything to, you know, turn away at or be overly afraid of, but it's definitely a little bit harder than what people might expect. Veteran difficulty, on the other hand, is a whole nother situation entirely. Veteran difficulty in this game is absolutely punishing, brutal, torturous. I don't even know what words to use on it. Because here's the thing about this game. Unlike other Call of Duty games... This one doesn't have regenerating health. You can only get health back by picking up health kits. There it is, hard, hard in difficulty and dutiful soldier. There is platinum number 750. Again, one of my all-time proudest platinum trophy accomplishments. So I will be back with you guys in just a moment once the trophies have synced up, and I will probably be showing that actually on the PS3 just because it is an old school PS3 game, one of the first games I ever uh, played on the PS3 or got trophies in, so I will be right back. Alright guys, now that I am over to the trophy menu, I think some of the older games are still trying to pop up on the screen because I haven't synced on here, well, aside from playing COD Classic, I really haven't synced up on here that much in a long time or waited to watch everything pop up on the screen. I don't know if any of that made any sense. But anyways, like I was saying with COD Classic, the main thing that makes veterans so brutally hard in this game is simply the fact that you have to use health kits to heal, but on veteran, there are no health kits, meaning that you often have to get through entire missions only taking one or two total hits because different weapons do different amounts of damage. The enemies can melee you several times and you can survive several melee hits. You can also survive several pistol shots, or if it's an SMG, you might be able to survive a couple of shots. Uh, if you get hit by a rifle, such as a Car 98K, you're gonna lose about two thirds of your health or maybe even a little bit more than that from just one shot. And another issue is that checkpoints in this game are not necessarily progression-based. They, well, they technically are progression-based. You can only get them at certain areas. They're in set places. But when you get to those places, if you don't have at least one-third of your health remaining, you will not get the checkpoint, except for very occasional times where the game does glitch out and give it to people. I've seen some comments from people that said they were able to get checkpoints with like 25% health left or something, but that's apparently a bug that's not really supposed to happen. So all that combined makes this to be such a brutal platinum because you really just cannot take damage throughout the levels. 
and you usually end up having to save pretty much all of your damage for the very last parts of the levels because there's a lot of really difficult final segments on some of these missions. So, like I said before though, it is nice that you get a trophy for every single mission in this game, and there's like 27 of them or something. So, or I think it's maybe, is it 26 or 27? I want to say it's 26. So, this is for completing the training mission. I would hope I don't need to guide anyone through the training mission. The very first mission of the game, St. Mary Glee's Pathfinder 1, it's this night mission. This one's really pretty easy. There's really no issues you're going to have here. You can definitely get through this one without even getting shot or dying on Veteran, but it's probably the last time that's going to happen. Then this is the first sort of, I would say, true, true combat mission. This is the first time where the gloves really come off and the game starts to become a lot harder. This one is a fairly long mission compared to the first two. And there are quite a few places where you can take damage. But it's nothing overwhelming because you at least have a lot of allies during the American campaign. This one, this one only has two challenging parts to it. The very beginning where you have to get into the church is pretty annoying and requires quite a bit of luck to get past the sort of line of German defenders around it. And then the very end of the mission, you have to go through... It's not that cemetery that's in the picture. It's like another open area where you have to kill an enemy sniper and you have to shoot a few machine gunners that keep respawning until you can sort of advance on it. And you also have to destroy some mortar positions. Again, that's a big thing about this game on Veteran is it requires a lot of luck to get through. Because very often, on a lot of these missions, you will just have really unlucky runs where you just get pounded by a bunch of bullets in a row and there's just no way to survive. It happens a lot. Then we have the first of, I think it's three vehicle missions in the game. Well, not vehicle missions, but car riding missions, I guess you could call it. This one is pretty annoying, but it's not as bad as the later two on Veteran. Like, this one will take several tries to get lucky on and not get hit several times. But it's not overwhelmingly bad. It's definitely not as bad as the other two. This mission actually wasn't all that bad, surprisingly, because a lot of it's fought in trenches and you don't fight more than one or two enemies at once. Plus, for the most part, you can hide in the trenches behind your allies and not have to worry too much. So that one wasn't too bad. Then you have this one, which is basically the Chateau mission, a lot of people will call it. This one isn't too bad either. It's a little bit more tedious clearing some of the rooms inside of the building. But once you sort of know where the enemies are, it's not too bad. And that is one advantage to this game, is that for the most part, the enemies are really consistent in both their placement and the numbers that spawn. I think it's basically the same on every difficulty, and nearly every playthrough is going to have pretty identical enemy behavior. Sometimes they're going to act a little bit differently, and sometimes it might feel like there might be an extra an extra enemy or two somewhere. But for the most part, it's actually very consistent, which is one slight advantage to this game. Also, I will say that the enemy AI is really stupid in this game, which also helps a lot. Because very often, as long as you start shooting at them, they may not shoot back at you. They actually will try to take cover. And if you actually shoot an enemy and they get knocked down but start getting back up, they won't shoot again until they're standing back up or crouching again, or in some cases shooting from prone. So that is at least a little bit advantageous that you can kind of take advantage of the bad enemy behavior. And along with all of that, this game is also good because it doesn't have a whole lot of infinite enemy spawn objectives throughout the game, which is extremely useful because if this game had infinite enemy spawns everywhere, the way that like Call of Duty 2 and 3 and many of the later games do, it would be just even more insanely hard to get through. This is the final main mission of the American campaign. It's a timed mission. You have 10 minutes to do it, but it's actually not all that bad because there aren't like a ton of enemies and they're very consistent with where they spawn at. Now we jump to the British campaign, which is by far the hardest of the three different campaigns. The very first British mission has you parachuting into a town at night. You have to run across a bridge while being shot at. Then you have to regroup with Captain Price. Then you have to run across a street while being shot at by a tank to recruit another person. Then you have to run back across the same bridge while being shot at by a tank and other enemies. And it's 100% luck as to whether or not you get across. I could not find any strategy to do it safely. And then you have to get onto a flat gun and slowly move it like an inch at a time over to the tank or else you will get shot and killed by one of the enemies. So yeah, a horrible mission design to start off the British campaign. 
This is probably the easiest British mission because there's actually a relatively easy way to not necessarily cheat it, but to exploit it. What you can do is in this mission at the very beginning, you run into the little guard tower on the bridge that has a machine gun in it. Basically pop on and off of the machine gun over and over again, just spraying it for a few seconds, then pop off of it. And eventually you'll do some damage, kill a few enemies, maybe by pure luck. And if you do that, it actually will eventually forward the objective. You will have one point where some enemies will spawn in behind you, usually right after you get a checkpoint. So when that happens, turn around and snipe them with your Lee Enfield. And really, if you do that and you're efficient about it, you'll end up having your people fall back across the bridge. And then you have to hold out for five minutes where they expected you to blow up seven tanks. I don't know how anyone expected that to be possible to do it normally, but if you stay hidden in that little shack, then the tanks will not be able to see or hit you, and your only threat might be the occasional German that wanders into the little hut with you or directly across the bridge with Captain Price. So that is by far, I would say, the easiest of the British missions, which is saying something. Eater Dam. This is considered by many to be the hardest mission in the game, and I can completely understand why. The main issue with this mission is that, aside from not having any allies, this mission is brutally long. I think it's the longest mission in the game, or very close to it. Because you have to go all the way through a giant dam, and kill tons of enemies throughout it, plant charges in places. Then you have to go all the way back up through it. And yes, new enemies appear, despite the fact that you had cleared everything previously. There's a lot of tight corridors. It's very easy to just get shot once and be basically screwed. You need pretty much all your health for the way back up just to make life a little bit easier on you. So yeah, the Eater Dam mission is pretty terrible. The Truck Ride. This mission is also horrible because it is on the back of a vehicle and this one is horribly, horribly luck-based. Very often, you will just get shot by random things that you don't know where they're coming from. Sometimes your Panzer Shrek shots will just completely miss. Sometimes your ally will use up an extra Panzer Shrek, leaving you with one fewer to use because they are limited. And it's just an absolute freaking nightmare to get through. Also, also, I believe this mission is bugged on the PS3 because you're supposed to get a second checkpoint on it sometime maybe around the second tunnel that you go through, but you don't actually get that checkpoint on the PS3, even if you have maximum health. So great design there, developers. Either that or I'm just completely wrong, but I've read that on at least one forum before, so maybe it's true. I mean, it's on the internet, so of course it's true. Anyway, the airfield escape, this is another vehicle sort of mission, but it's not quite as bad. What you can do is when you get to the anti-air gun here, you can get on it and you can kill the first few planes. And then you're going to have these three respawning enemies on the rooftop to your left. But the good thing about that is that you can kill them while you're still on the anti-air gun. And the enemies in front of you, I never got hit by any of them, thankfully. I only ever got hit by the planes if I missed one of them, which is basically instant death. Or by the enemies on the building up to the left. But that is also your only checkpoint right before you get to that part. So that's pretty annoying. At least it's a shorter mission. I would say that the battleship might have been the most difficult mission for me because Eater Dam was extremely painful to get through, but it's more because of its length than anything else. This one is just absolute hell because you have a lot of really tight corridors, a couple of infinite enemy spawn points you have to get past. There's one area where you just have to run straight across an open area of the ship and hope you don't get shot. It, it, it was not fun. It's a lot of close quarters clearing stuff out. It's definitely one of the hardest missions along with Eater Dam and Truck Ride. Then we get to the Soviet missions. I would say that they're a little bit harder than the American missions, but definitely not as hard as the British missions for the most part. Now, this very first mission doesn't have any combat. You basically just follow the instructions on screen. You'll probably die once or twice due to bad luck, but it's not any real combat and it's very short, so it's not much of a problem. This next one, the only really hard part of this mission is getting across the starting area without taking damage because it's, again, very heavily luck-based. Then you have the, uh, I think it's like the train station is this one. Yeah, this one isn't too bad. It's a pretty short mission. There's not too much to worry about here. The sewer mission is also relatively short, but you don't really have any allies in these missions, so that can be a little bit more annoying at times. Ah, Pavlov's house. So this mission, interestingly enough, I don't think it's the hardest mission in the game. 
Now, don't get me wrong, it's extremely difficult. It is. It has one of the most difficult individual objectives in the game on Veteran, but there is kind of a way to exploit the brutal holdout portion at the end of the mission. Basically, you have to get through the first part of the mission up until you have to start clearing the house, get through all of that without taking damage, which is easier said than done. Then you have to clear out the entire house five floors without really taking more than one hit. If you take more than one hit, you're pretty much screwed because there's still some difficult stuff to come. And clearing all five floors of the house with your allies being really stupid and not really helping for some reason is not a fun time. So... With that, expect to die at least probably 20, 30, 40 times there and expect to be very pissed off at the game when you inevitably end up dying on like the fourth floor or the basement or whatever the last floor is that you're clearing. But once you get through that part, the worst of the mission is over. You just have to jump on a couple of PTRS rifles to take out tanks, which is, again, easier said than done because the tanks have stupid good accuracy that'll kill you pretty quickly, and the controls are so janky on the PS3. And that's another problem that PC players definitely had an advantage over us on, is that they definitely have better, snappier controls for this game because it was originally only made for PC and then ported to consoles. But once you get through that part, you can run out the side of the building and hide behind a wall pretty much away from everything. And you might still get a couple of Germans that come after you, but for the most part, you can just hide there and sit there and wait out the four-minute timer instead of having to hide out inside the house, which makes that part of the mission many, many times easier. So at that point, the worst of the game is over. You then get two relatively short missions in the rail yard and the factory. These two missions aren't too bad. You have a few allies, not too many, but the missions are at least short and you still have some pretty good weapons for them. Then you get two tank missions and these missions are also fairly straightforward. You can actually take a surprising number of hits in the tank I found. Maybe that was just luck, but I found it felt like you could take more hits than you would kind of expect. The first mission is really easy because you can just let the other tanks do all the work for you. The second mission is super, super short, but you pretty much have to do all the work yourself. So you have to memorize the tank locations and hope you don't get hit. There's also a few Panzerfaust soldiers to worry about. Then you get three more trophies here for completing all of the American, British, and Russian missions, which are going to unlock upon completing each of these three sets of missions. But that's not actually the end of the game. There are three more after this. You then have to complete basically three bonus missions, I guess you could call them. The first one is the American mission. This one actually isn't that bad because once you get, again, you have a lot of allies. As long as you can get through the first part with all of the mortars going off, you shouldn't have too many problems. But I will say when you get to the final objective of destroying two tanks, use the Panzerfaust in the bunker instead of using the Flak 88 gun like it wants you to do because it's pretty much impossible to do it on the Flak 88. Then you have the final true British mission, or the final British mission overall, and this one actually was a lot harder than I expected it to be on Veteran because it's fairly long and a lot of it you don't have much of an allies thing to help you out. And then you have to clear a couple of bunkers at the very end, and my god, those are absolute freaking torture to get through. I don't know why, maybe I was just getting really unlucky with them or something, but it just took me probably over an hour just to finish that final checkpoint. And then finally you have the Berlin mission, the Reichstag mission. This one is actually pretty straightforward. It's the last Soviet mission. There's not a whole lot of enemies and you have tons of allies here. So as long as you sort of know what to do, it's not that bad. Then you get trophies for finishing the game on Veteran and Hardened as well as Regular. But here's another stupid thing about this game. The trophies, the difficulty trophies, don't auto-pop. Meaning you have to do a minimum of three playthroughs to unlock all the trophies and I can't figure out why they wouldn't have just let you get all the trophies for beating this game on veteran. If you can beat this game on veteran you can beat any other Call of Duty game on veteran and you can sure as hell beat this one on hardened because on hardened you still take a fair bit of damage but you get health kits and almost every death you're going to have on hardened is either going to be you just making a stupid mistake or just rushing too much or outright forgetting an objective, which did happen to me once or twice where I completely forgot what to do, just blanked out on it. So I don't know why they thought that was a good idea. This used to be a common thing in the PS3 era. It's not as common now, thank God. And then there are five miscellaneous trophies, but they're all fairly easy. And if you don't get some of them throughout just your main playthroughs of the game, you can always just go clean them up 
on the Greenhorn recruit difficulty without any problems. They can all be done on the very first combat mission of the game because there's only a handful of enemies there that you even have to kill. This trophy should come naturally while playing through on regular. And this one will probably come naturally while playing on regular. But then these last three may not come naturally. These ones you may have to go back and do on Recruit or Greenhorn difficulty. I'm going to call it one or the other throughout this video. Completing a mission using only a pistol and no melee attacks. I swear that's not where I got my inspiration to do pistol-only challenge runs of Call of Duty games from. I completely forgot this trophy existed until I came back to this game. This one is a little bit harder because the melee in this game is really, really bad. But both of these can easily be done on the very first mission of the game. It'll just take two playthroughs. And then finally, complete a mission without taking damage. This is really only realistically doable on that very first true combat mission of the game. Because you can't uh, take damage and then heal. The game won't accept that. It's not like some games out there where you can get away with that. So, yeah, that was my whole experience with this game on Veteran. As you can see, this is now my longest Platinum Trophy, as I obtained the first trophy all the way back in 2011, and it is now 2023, so it took 12 years and one month, according to PSN Profiles. But I will say, at this point, I have now completed almost every Call of Duty game that there is, which I am extremely proud of. So you have both versions of Ghosts I've completed. Then you have Infinite Warfare. Oh, is this actually all of them? Are they all showing? I don't think that's showing all of them, is it? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure that's showing all of them. But with all the Call of Duty games, I've now done every PS3 Call of Duty except for the PS3 version of Advanced Warfare, which is a relatively easy Platinum, but I'm pretty worried about doing that DLC a second time, and the PS3 version of Black Ops 3, which I'm pretty sure is not even obtainable anymore. Then on the PS4, I have finished, you know, Infinite Warfare. I did both versions of Ghosts. I did the PS4 version of Advanced Warfare. I 100%ed the... I've 100 percent all these games as well, not just Platinums. I finished Black Ops 3, and then Infinite Warfare. I finished World War II. I finished the PS4 version of Vanguard. I still need to go back and do the PS5 version of Vanguard, though I will do that eventually. I did the campaign remaster for MW2 and the remaster for Call of Duty 4. I did the modern Modern Warfare 1 and 2. And I actually have done the modern Modern Warfare 2 twice. Wait, does this not show PS5 games on here? I don't think that this actually shows PS5 games. Wow. I never knew that it did that. I, wow. Okay. That shows how long it's been since I've really played anything on the PS3. Or actually, like, extensively looked at my trophy list on the PS3. So that's actually kind of interesting. So the only Call of Duty games I have left are the PS5 version of Vanguard, which I will do. I'm not worried about that one. It's going to be a little annoying at times, but I'm not too worried about it. Then I still have to do both versions of Cold War, possibly. But I've heard some horror stories, not just about the Return to Fit Arena trophy or whatever it's called. Or Reunite with Fit Arena, whatever that, whatever that trophy is. The one for finishing Dead Ops Arcade is pretty brutal, but it's been made easier. But I've also heard horror stories about a couple of the multiplayer trophies. So not really looking forward to that. Then, of course, there's the PS3 versions of Advanced Warfare and Black Ops 3, which I have no intentions of doing either of those. Maybe the Advanced Warfare, but definitely not Black Ops 3. And then there's also Black Ops 4, which that's not going to happen. I'm going to say that right now. That's not going to happen. So when it comes to Call of Duty Classic, it is the hardest Call of Duty game I have ever platinumed. But is it the hardest Call of Duty game there is? It's up there. It's definitely harder than World at War. It's definitely harder in terms of actual raw difficulty than Black Ops 3. But I'm not sure how it stacks up to Black Ops 4. So that would be the ultimate comparison is, you know, is this game easier or harder than Black Ops 4? Black Ops 4, of course, doesn't have any true campaign. It's all multiplayer, zombies, and Blackout Battle Royale. And that's the main reason why I don't want to do it, because it's all multiplayer-oriented, not to mention the zombies Easter eggs in that game are stupidly long. But yeah, with that, that's almost every Call of Duty game done. Most of the ones I do plan on doing are now done. Though, by the time this comes out as a video, Modern Warfare 3 will probably have released by that point. Oh, ha ha ha, Sledgehammer. I bet you guys thought this was real f***ing funny when you came up with this idea. I'm sure that you were so happy to bend so many trophy hunters over a big old barrel and show them the 50 states. 
because that's what you just did. So go f yourselves with this trophy list. So, level 841, 18%, 26,715 total trophies, 750 platinums, 4,906 golds, 7,149 silvers, 13,910 bronzes. So, once again, one of my proudest platinum trophies of all time. I want to thank you guys for sitting through this whole probably 20 plus minute long video of me rambling on about how annoyed I was at various missions on Veteran. So, I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you made it all the way to the end, please let me know what you think the hardest Call of Duty Platinum trophy is. And, you know, if you've, how many of them have you completed? Just let me know your thoughts on Call of Duty Platinums in general will be totally fine. Hopefully get some discussion going in the comments. If you've made it all the way through this video, please go ahead and like it as well as subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't already. And yeah, that's going to be it. Thank you guys for being here. If you are a new subscriber or if you've been with me since I got that Fallout 3 Platinum 13 years ago, uh, just, you know, let me know how long, how long have you been here for. Definitely let me know that as well. So get lots of comments going because why not? We're celebrating tonight. Platinum Trophy number 750. I am lifting up my sparkling water can because I drink sparkling water like a weirdo. And yeah, I'm lifting that up in a toast to 750. Three quarters of the way to the big 1,000. And before anyone asks, I don't know what I'm doing for 1,000. So, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see y'all back here real soon for some more trophy content.